This car is inspired from a battle axe, and this car is one of the most powerful supercar from early 90s. Yet, it's the most costliest flop of that time. But first, let me tell you how this great supercar took down its own company. The Gumpert Apollo was a hardcore supercar that was right up there with the best supercars of its day. It even set a lap record at the infamous Nürburgring circuit. The Apollo had a no-frills approach to squeezing every ounce of performance from its 3.3-liter twin-turbocharged V8 engine. That led to a rather controversial styling and a high sticker price that quickly relegated it to the fringes of the car community. Roland Gumpert struggled to sell these cars over the course of seven years, even releasing different variants in a bid to stimulate interest. Unfortunately, nothing worked, and the Apollo slipped beneath the waves in 2013, taking the company down with it. Now meet the car that drew inspiration from an ancient Iranian cavalry's battle axe the TVR Sagaris. This 2005 beast boasted an inline-six engine belting out over 400 horses, sprinting 0 to 60 miles per hour faster than a cheeseburger disappears, with a top speed of 185 miles per hour. But it had more quirks than a Sikkim, skimping on safety features and sporting shoddy build quality. The Sagaris dreamt of conquering the American supercar scene, but couldn't even make a dent in Europe. A mere 211 units rolled off the assembly line before the curtain fell in 2006. Ah, behold the Bricklid SV1, Canada's attempt to storm the performance car scene, going head-to-head -head with the mighty C3 Corvette. But guess what? Instead of revving its engines to stardom, it belly flopped, becoming one of history's worst-selling sports cars. Safety was their thing, which isn't a bad thing at all, but they'd went full throttle on it. The outcome, a clunky, overweight, fiberglass-coated contraption that struggled to move, let alone race. It was like it was towing a caravan of bricks. And if that wasn't enough, quality control issues joined the party, making it a double disaster. After two agonizing years, they wisely yanked the plug on the Bricklin SV1, leaving it in the annals of automotive misadventures. Even the supercar giants can stumble, as seen in the curious case of the Lamborghini Jalpa. Lamborghini, in a quest for a broader audience, birthed this automotive misadventure. Their grand idea? Unveil the Lamborghini Jalpa as an affordable supercar to cozy up next to the pricier flagship Countach. Well, turns out folks would rather reach for the stars with the Countach or have no Lamborghini at all. To make matters worse, the Jalpa sported a styling that left folks scratching their heads and a feeble V8 engine that barely wheezed out 255 horses. It took nearly six seconds to hit 60 miles per hour, not exactly supercar territory. In the end, they only managed to churn out a modest 420 Jalpas from 1982 to 1988. Enter the Bugatti EB110 a hypercar legend that made waves in its heyday. It was like the tech wizardry of the automotive world, boasting a powerhouse quad-turbocharged engine churning out a jaw-dropping 603 horses, enough to rocket this beast to a 220 miles per hour top speed. But here's the kicker. Its grand entrance was timed with the world getting hit by a global economic smackdown. And oh, the price tag. At half a million bucks, it felt like trying to sell diamond-studded snow shovels in July. Despite its top-tier craftsmanship and handling that could make a cheetah jealous, the EB110 ended up doing a belly flop in the commercial pool. In fact, it pushed Bugatti right into the financial abyss, waving the bankruptcy flag high and proud. Meet Vector, the plucky American carmaker that aimed to wrestle with Italian supercar giants. They birthed the Vector W8, a technological marvel packed with aerospace-grade materials and a thunderous 6.0-liter Rodec twin-turbocharged V8 engine, blasting past 240 miles per hour. But here's the twist. This supercar's price tag, starting at $300,000 in 1989, later hitting $450,000 in 1992, made it a financial high-wire act. Unfortunately, despite its quality and performance, Vector couldn't score the brand recognition or market love to make it big. The result? The W8 became one of the costliest flops in automotive history, with fewer than 20 units finding buyers. 
The second gen Acura NSX was no slouch. It flaunted sleek looks, a healthy dose of power, and a flexible hybrid powertrain, earning its stripes as a practical supercar. Zooming onto the scene in 2016, it revved on until 2021, when it sadly waved the white flag due to sluggish sales. Now let's talk competition. Going up against heavyweights like the Audi R8 and Corvette Z06 was like bringing a knife to a gunfight. But here's the real kicker. It couldn't quite measure up to the sky-high standards set by its older sibling. The first-gen NSX had revolutionized the supercar game with its performance and maintenance simplicity. There was just no way the second-gen NSX could match that iconic status. You'd be forgiven for scratching your head at the mention of the Aston Martin Virage. This obscure car rolled onto the scene in 2011, aiming to bridge the gap between the DB9 and DBS models. Under the hood, it packed a 5.9-liter V12 engine with 490 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. Sounds promising, right? Well, not quite. With a hefty price tag of $210,000, the Virage turned out to be a misstep. Just 18 months later, it made a quiet exit. Performance-wise, it only nudged slightly ahead of the DB9 and couldn't hold a candle to the DBS. It lacked the wow factor in terms of tech, and its styling failed to stand out from the crowd of other Aston Martins. In the end, it was like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, an unfortunate mismatch in the Aston Martin family. Time magazine didn't hold back when they slapped the Ferrari Mondial 8 onto their list of the 50 worst cars ever made. Ouch! And honestly, it's hard to come to Ferrari's defense here. The Mondial 8 swaggered in as the replacement for the 308 208's GT4 Coupe, and it held the fort as the last 2 plus 2 V8 from Ferrari until the California strutted its stuff in 2008. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. It was about as peppy as a sloth on a Monday morning. With a measly 214 horses under the hood, this 3,459 pound, that's roughly a small elephant, supercar needed nearly a geological era, well, okay, almost 10 seconds, to hit 60 miles per hour. That's like driving a snail with a Ferrari sticker. But wait, there's more. This prancing horse had a limp. Reliability? Forget about it. It played host to more issues than a complicated soap opera plot, especially with its fussy Bosch injection system. In the world of Ferrari, the Mondial 8 is a bit like the black sheep of the family. Time magazine certainly didn't hold back in declaring it one of the all-time great flops in automotive history. Well, check out this video if you want to know more about controversial cars.